Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are doing good. So in the last video, we learned about the cervical vertebrae and we got that topic right. Today, we are going to learn about the thoracic vertebrae and their characteristics. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. So let's see some points about the thoracic vertebrae. Basically, there are 12 thoracic vertebrae in the spinal column. The body of the thoracic vertebrae bears two costal demifacets and demifacet means half of a facet. The costal facets include firstly the superior costal facet. It is larger in size and is placed on the upper border of the body near the pedicel. It articulates with the head of the numerically corresponding rib. The other is the inferior costal facet. It is placed on the lower border in front of the inferior vertebral notch. It articulates with the next lower rib. Okay, let's see all these parts. So this is the lateral view of thoracic vertebra. This is the superior costal facet as you can see. It is near the upper border and is larger in size. The next we have is the inferior costal demifacet as you can see again. Okay, let's see how these costal facets are attached with the ribs. This is the structure for attachment of rib with the superior and inferior costal demifacets. This is the rib and these are how the ribs are attached with the demifacets. We will learn about the ribs later on. Now let's see the characteristics about the transverse process. The transverse process are large and are directly laterally and backwards. The anterior surface of each transverse process bears transverse costal facets near its tip and these are present there for articulation with the tubercle of the rib. Time to see these parts. So this is the superior and lateral view of thoracic vertebra. This large process which you can see is the transverse process directed laterally and backwards. This is the transfer costal facet for attachment with the tubercle of the rib which we saw in the previous diagram. And this is the spinous process which is long and is directed downwards and backwards. Next we have is the first thoracic vertebra. Superior costal facet on the body of first thoracic vertebra is complete and it articulates with the head of first rib. The inferior costal facet is a demifacet, the half of a facet, for attachment with the second rib. So let's see the first thoracic vertebra from different point of views. So this is the diagram for the first thoracic vertebra looked from different point of views. As you can see, this is the anterior view. This is the lateral view. This is the posterior view and this is the superior view. The inferior costal facet in this vertebra is a demifacet. Don't forget that. The next we come straight to the 10th thoracic vertebra. The body of the 10th thoracic vertebra has only the superior costal facets for attachment with the corresponding rib. The inferior costal facets are absent in it. So let's see the figure of 10th thoracic vertebra. This is the 10th thoracic vertebra and this is the superior costal facet. Hey, don't confuse this with the inferior costal facet. It is the inferior articular facet and not the inferior costal facet. After T10, we have the thoracic vertebrae 11 and 12. The bodies of 11 and 12 thoracic vertebrae have only single complete costal facets on each side and the transverse process of these vertebrae don't have transverse costal facets. Can you guess why? Okay, I'll tell you because the 11th and 12th ribs are floating ribs and the anterior ends of 11th and 12th ribs are free. Let's see the diagrams. This is the thoracic vertebra number 11 and this is the single complete costal facet. Let's see the anterior view of 11th thoracic vertebra to see the transverse process. This is the anterior view of T11 or thoracic vertebra 11 and these are the transverse process. As you can see, they don't have transverse costal facets. So that is it for today guys. I hope you understood today's topic. See you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching guys. Have a nice day.